the Accurate Data Specials CXO series. Today we have with us Prithijit Roy, and he's better known amongst the industry as, as Jeet. And he'll be talking about transformation after turbulence, how AI will drive strategic initiators for enterprises. The session will be moderated by Samir Dhanrajani, who is the CEO of AI Curate Advisory and Consulting. Before we start, I'd like to just set a few housekeeping rules. I request everybody to be on mute, on silent, so that everybody can have a good listening experience. We'll be taking questions in the end. If you have any questions, please use the chat and the Q&A facility that you have with WebEx, and we will forward them to Samir to we'll take them up. Just start by introducing is the CEO and co-founder of Bridge I2I, a leading AI analytics solutions company, a trusted partner to enterprises for driving digital transformation outcomes. Can you please go on mute, please? Request you to go on mute. With over two decades of experience in setting up and growing analytics businesses, Jeet is one of the most respected leaders in the industry today. Like many reputed analytics leaders, he is a product of the Indian Statistical Institute and a frequent speaker at international industry forums. Jeet has authored several journals in elite publications. He is also a member of several industry councils and works with other leaders to drive change and bring about a revolution using disruptive technologies. Jeet, we're very grateful to have you with us. Looking forward to the Thanks session. Thank you, to be here. Thank you. Samir, I hand it over to you. Thanks, Rohan. And, uh... Welcome everyone. This is the second edition or rather third edition of uh, our webinar series. Uh, and Jeet, first of all, thank you so much uh, for agreeing to be part of this uh, session. Uh, I know you never say no, but uh, at the end of the day, I think 60 minutes of you is, is a big uh, kind of, let's say, opportunity for us to kind of have a uh, kind of a session where to me, I think uh, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, We've often talked in forums, we often had sidebar conversation. But one thing as a personality, one thing as a trait, I must kind of admire about you is you're very affable. Uh, easy to talk uh, kind of a thing, very easy to kind of relate. And I think that's something which uh, I think in the industry, uh, it's, it's a great trait to have because uh, leaders like you set up that benchmark in terms of uh, unassuming yet I would say very decisive leadership, and I think that's what you're all about. Uh, I think th there's a lot to talk about in our theme today, this whole aspect about transformation after turbulence. But before I come to the main set of I would say questions and uh, really take your uh, viewpoints, let me kind of ask you, uh, you've been into this industry where many of the participants in the session, I'm sure, haven't heard the term analytics. And you've seen that entire journey. Uh, help us understand, and this is your view, Jeet talking, Jeet's kind of a, let's say, viewpoint. Over the last 20 years, what's been the major metamorphosis in this analytics industry? Sure. Sure, Samit, thanks. And thanks for your kind words also. You're very kind. Uh, and I think uh, obviously the topic uh, attracts me other than the fact that it's an interaction with you. And I think it's also unprecedented. I don't think we've done a session like this where both of us sitting at home and doing a session. So that's also, uh, that way it's a very different experience. So excited about uh, talking to everyone here. Uh, I think analytics space, again, I have been an analytics practitioner for the last two decades or so. In fact, when I started of analytics after passing out of ISI, I think the term did not exist at that point of time. So it was more about uh, using data uh, to solve business problems. And then we uh, realized, you know, there are practical applications of what we studied in college, uh, like statistical modeling, econometrics, and others. So that was pretty exciting then and uh, then itself. And I think the whole space started building up. If you think about, for example, in India, 
There was more market research before that, but there was no analytics as such. And, and the main reason for that is the lack of data. Uh, and, and at that point of time, people had to go out and talk to consumers to gather, do research, to, because there was no data. Uh, from there, I think we've seen a lot changing over the last 20 years or so. And, and more so, I think the biggest change has been technology. Uh, because the ability to store data, process data itself has gone up many fold. Think about any feed that we have uh, into our Facebook or LinkedIn is actually data today. The fact that we are talking with probably many users attending is, uh, is some form of data. So which, then today you can thankfully store and process a lot of this data, uh, which could not be thought of so earlier. So I think the biggest progress, I think, from an analytics standpoint, there's a lot more data today. A lot of things have become data which you never thought was data, like video has become data, uh, again, voice has become data. So that's one big change. Obviously, also the learning, I think it's all about learning from data. I think the science of learning has also hence evolved. Uh, obviously, there was neural networks, machine learning, and others earlier too, but today you can use a lot more of those techniques, uh, uh, which was probably not that possible 20 years back. And last, and uh, probably the biggest one again, which also ties back to technology, I think the, uh, the fact that it's not an offline thing, the fact that this is embedded back into business systems, uh, and that someone who uses it doesn't have to be a data scientist, but using analytics in the back end, so it's in the DNA, uh, but you don't even know it's a heavy lifting machine learning or analytics, but a sales guy knows, you know, I should do this, I should sell this to X. Uh, or a, a supply chain planner knows, you know, my planning says this, but the forecasting also says this. So which was not thought of earlier. It's very integrated back into systems, very simplified. Uh, today we consume analytics without knowing there's a lot of analytics sitting behind the scene. Uh, and also the use cases has also become huge. Uh, I think when we started off, I think it was a few industry like financial services, retail or so, uh, where there were use cases. But over the last uh, two decades today, it's not just marketing or financial services or risk and others. It's, it's across industries and it's across uh, geographies, uh, across companies of different sizes. Uh, today, it's a need of the day. Earlier, it was only about competitive advantage. Today, I think it's needed for survival. Without doing it, you can't compete at all. So I think those are probably, in my view, uh, a lot that has changed that I've seen. Again, a lot of it is the same thing that we do, but I think how we do has changed. So that's how uh, I would probably look at it uh, in, in what I have seen over the last 20 years or so. Rightly said, how we do has changed drastically in your views, uh, G. Uh, you mentioned about financial services and retail as the pioneers in adopting analytics. And this is linked uh, back to the question I have now, uh, more of the current situation. We are into a midst of pandemic. COVID uh, has taken over the entire, I would say, uh, highlights. I'm sure you're having a lot of conversation with the clients, potential uh, customers and all. Uh, what's coming out purely in terms of the industries you see, which are uh, to the extent not able to pick up uh, currently or may have challenges or which are the industries you believe uh, from an AI analytics point of view will take off post COVID. So any, any light you want to throw over there as, as part of your uh, inputs? Yeah, so, uh, so it's again, as I was saying, it's very unprecedented times and uh, it's not just the fact that we are doing this call uh, from home, but it's also the fact things have just over the last one month uh, changed in a way. It's not about health today, uh, but it's also organizations focus have changed drastically. Uh, I think uh, I think from an industry standpoint, there is an element which I would say is a very short-run view uh, because today, while, and I was, and I, mean, so I read somewhere, I think, that like before Christ and after, I don't know many AD and BC, this, uh, before Corona and after Corona, which is probably going to be the real. And to be honest, that AC and BC uh, are two different worlds in some form. Uh, and I think today we are going through Corona, so that short term is a lot more about, if you see what we are doing today, we are very focused on 
uh, very essential commodities which are very important for our life. Uh, so those industries, so if I just look at FMCG, uh, today uh, a lot of industries who are probably focusing on are probably around essentials, around hygiene, around health, uh, while uh, the market, say, of alcohol beverage and others are probably getting a bit in. So and it's one industry, but every industry, I think there is a hit. I think there are some industries like a travel or hospitality. There is an immediate hit uh, where they have to figure out, you know, what can we do? Uh, but but there are some industries who are probably seeing the other side, uh, uh, like in some form, and, and, and more so, I think, uh, it's also where it's possible. Like, uh, I think a lot of what really getting popular is what I would call as digital, and if you can do that digitally, obviously you can't travel digitally, uh, more so you can't stay in a hotel digitally, uh, but you can do your education digitally. So education is rewinding and thinking, you know, can, it, can we do it without being in the schools or the colleges? Similarly, I think there are also several other industries, I think, which has the option to do things digitally. And they are rethinking their business model significantly uh, in terms of how to make that happen. While there are also, I think, across industries, wherever someone is uh, making a product or others, there are newer challenges building up. Uh, like, I think, with China going down earlier in this year, uh, I think there was a tremendous supply chain uh, effect we saw. Uh, again, being a lot of the manufacturing sitting there, and also the demand of one big market going down. Uh, but I think now, while China is up, I think very quickly we see uh, the demand from the rest of the world has gone down uh, significantly. So it, it's just very unpredictable. So when someone is managing supply chain, for example, he or she has to rethink the whole business. The traditional forecasting is all going wrong. So I think so any manufacturing, any high tech, any FMCG is uh, very significantly rethinking their supply chain. I think I think new sales or new business may not be so much in uh, in focus, but I think a lot of businesses who can do that digitally is trying to rethink their models in terms of how do I sell digitally? How do I do commerce digitally? So I think a lot uh, in that sense, so I would say there are some obvious industries who got hit, but there are some industries who are going to be hit later, so there's some time to uh, cope up with this scenario, like a banking or insurance. So they are actually very quickly rethinking what is their business model. And then there are industries who are gaining uh, who can do it a lot more digitally. So I think I won't call it a very industry specific. Yes, there are gainers, there are losers, but even the value chain of how you do business has become uh, pretty different very quickly. I was talking to someone yesterday who was saying, you know, uh, who's in the FMCG, who, who said, you know, my transformation focus has become, luckily I'm into hygiene products, so I have those products going, but it's all about can I create supply? Uh, it's not about anything else. Let me just make sure at this point of time, uh, let me have those um, commodities ready which the customers are looking for. We have seen how people are changing their factories to manufacture something else, which is the need of the day. So I think I would say, yes, there are obvious industry impact, but also within industry, I think uh, people are rethinking significantly on what matters today. Uh, as compared to others. So I think there are clear uh, industries who are, can go digitally, they are gaining, uh, but then there are industries who have a significant immediate hit. There are some industries like insurance, FS, and others who are to have time to cope up uh, which be while, while they get hit. So that's what they're working on. Interesting. So what what I was hearing and I was trying to pick up something, uh, you mentioned about this transformation and the example what you gave about the value chain uh, uh, was interesting. Now think of the, this, Jeet. Uh, there are organizations today in India and uh, global, and I know Bridge i 2 serves both the markets and of course, uh, 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 it's, it's a global kind of, a, let's say, a player in terms of AI uh, service provider. Now, clients or the organizations which have already embarked on their digital transformation journey, the whole aspect about uh, looking at AI analytics as part of strategic interventions. Now, they would have earmarked money. Suddenly in the first two months, they started kind of releasing that as part of the projects, engagements, and the kind of, let's say, the impact they would like to see. Suddenly the breaks come in. March, April, and few months down the line, it's going to be absolutely a very different world. 
How do you see this now? Let's say we are out of this COVID few months down the line and God willing, we should be. How do you expect or rather how do you perceive uh, clients or these potential organizations looking at their digital transformation agenda as part of the overall journey? No, absolutely. I think uh, it's a great question, Samir, and, and, and I don't have a crystal ball to say that I am correct, but I can uh, I can share what I'm hearing. I can share a little bit of how things are evolving and also some are predictions probably being coming from this space. Uh, we always make predictions in that scenario. I think, I think immediately, I think, as you said, the next two months or even a month, I think a lot of focus is really crisis management because this is truly a crisis. How do you uh, get out of this crisis? How do you make sure you give customers what they need? Your employees are safe and your employees are able to work in whichever scenario you're able to work and, and engage with them, which is the immediate focus. But I think this time will slowly stabilize and, and it's starting to stabilize also where there are two, three, four uh, things, themes which are immediately in a slightly longer short term uh, becoming uh, popular. Uh, and one, and I'll talk to two, three of those. One I would say is this whole supply chain orchestration. Uh, I think as you talked about this whole demand supply shock uh, and the effect that has come into place. And, and I think we as businesses using analytics and others uh, we have got used to a trend and have, we always have limited stock and we have not stored things for uh, for scenarios like this. So so the whole orchestration on supply chain and it's not just demand and supply planning, but it's also about across the supply value chain, uh, where things can get stuck, uh, where you are not able to plan for. If you know things are not coming upstream, can you kind of pass the signal downstream? Uh, to ensure that uh, you are able to coordinate and orchestrate. So that's one big area. I think the whole, uh, the ability to predict uh, how things could go wrong across the supply value chain is one area of focus. Second, I think there are industries who are very focused on risk. So crisis obviously is today, and, and, and it's not just you have seen all the crises. There could be a lot more hitting us. So uh, immediate short term, I think financial services insurance, as we talked about, there's a lot of focus in understanding what kind of risk uh, is the collection risk, is there a uh, credit risk, uh, is there element also. It's not about a generic concept, I think you cannot stop doing loans. You have to understand which customers might default, who might be more impacted as a consumer or a small business or others, as opposed to others. If you think about it, that's a, that's a very data game because you haven't seen this. So how do you use data uh, to figure out uh, is uh, Sabir or Jeet more risky? Uh, versus someone else more risky, how do I plan my loans, how do I plan my collection efforts and others. And third, just uh, the whole cash flow planning itself uh, is a big uh, area uh, to focus on uh, because uh, today it's going to be, for a period, it's going to be a cash game, so where can you save, how do you plan it, uh, and not just right now, but for the, the risk to come in. I think that being said, I think also companies are also, I think to some extent will be remembered later on how they work with clients and employees. So there's also a little bit of focus switching into saying, how do I do a brand goodwill management? Uh, because I think, can I learn from social media what people are talking about my brand? Is there a perception around it? Can I figure out if an insurance company not able to cover uh, a, through a particular clause does that make my customers unhappy? Can I use AI for the community or better lives? As companies are also starting to think a little bit uh, into some of those immediate ones in the short run. But again, I think that's still short run. I think a larger focus in a slightly longer term will go into what I was saying as digital. And I think digital has become more important than ever. Uh, because I think at this point of time, everyone's figuring out, can I still do this business digitally? Can I engage with my customers without meeting them? Can I use a chatbot for it? Can I do commerce on Amazon? Can I have my own website? Can I get my sales guy without traveling somewhere to sell? Can I automate my claims process? So a lot of what I would call digital automation, uh, and, and a lot of this, actually, if you think digital is all about data, and, and, and an intelligent way to automate how you do business. And, and that's where a lot of the AI focus is going to be significantly moving to uh, once we are done with our thinking on supply chain, 
brand management and risk management, uh, then the idea would be to gradually focus on, okay, how do I do a digital business and how do I even do that quicker than what I thought earlier? So someone might have been in an AI program and they had a 22, uh, 21, 22 was their phase they approach. Now they are saying, you know, can I get it in 2020? So some of those are also hopefully going to show up is my view. I haven't seen that fully shape up as yet. It's too short a time. But that's my hypothesis other than what I'm seeing. The medium term things on supply chain risk and others, we're already seeing that. So that's a great set of information, what you said, supply chain risk. Uh, the cash flow forecasting given the kind of scenario in terms of courses being tightly monitored and uh, the last which is how do you kind of keep a gauge in terms of the brand the whole aspect of what's happening externally and any kind of let's say best practices can be captured so i, I think yeah this is great and linked to this jeet i think if we extend the conversation and uh, good to know I, and i'm sure the participants are able to kind of relate in terms of the new focus area they should be doing as part of let's say their AI's kind of or digital kind of let's say strategy vision and all linked to this is also a question which has always been a kind of a perennial question which is about the ROI now do you see this post recovery post COVID scenario where there'll be some new metrics of measurement new metrics which will be gauged as part of let's say analytics AI outputs, uh, some new mechanisms will come in in terms of the AI uh, maturity. Uh, how do you see this entire thing uh, shaping up? Because you mentioned a great lot about the transformation of business, the value chain disruption, but I'm sure clients are smart also. They will say, okay, show us where does the whole kind of, let's say, ROI lie. So uh, what's your thinking over there, Jeet? No, absolutely. I think it's a valid point and be it the crisis or not be the crisis, this is one thing if you ask me. Uh, I think, it, and for the industry itself, I get a little nervous because uh, more money comes into investment in this space because there's ROI. So if there's no ROI, they, this this is not an existing uh, spend in most industries. It's, it's again with the hope. Uh, this should give a top line or bottom line impact is at the end of the day, the most important thing. And sometimes I think we as practitioners or others uh, tend to forget that and, and, and more I say that uh, because AI yeah, is a new theme, but, but look back 10, 15 years back, you would remember there was a large investment we used to do at that time on business intelligence and reporting and others. So we used to put data warehouses in place, so the, the systems were we're spending a lot of money and we created a lot of reports. But unfortunately, that did not vanish over the last uh, decade, decade and a half, because a lot of those reports were not actionable. Uh, and those were available, but not, no actions happened from it. And I think that story is also today, we might say, you know, machines are doing things, uh, but uh, are we able to make that impactful? Are we able to see, you know, humans are enabled to drive better decisions uh, are we able to uh, really go past that BI period and create AI, which is usable? And I would say a lot of time that focus on the final mile is very low, uh, where we solve a problem and we, we don't think about how do you scale this up? How do you drive adoption? Which I think is the biggest focus uh, we as practitioners have to think even, and, and more so after COVID because uh, the attention span will be low. A lot of investments will where earlier more novel idea, let's try it because everyone is doing AI, let's do it. But today it's going to be, am I getting value very quickly out of it? So so the focus will be more about doing small POCs or proof of concepts, show value, and if it gives ROI, then I'll invest more. But the POCs only become su successful not because algorithmically you can solve it, but because the clients have been able to implement it and there is an adoption related to it. A lot of the times, I think even scaling this up to a business scale becomes an issue. So how do you put it into a system where someone can use it very easily? Uh, uh, again, customers can see the value out of scaling is not the easiest thing to do. A lot of the times products fail because they cannot scale to the complexities of an organization. So I would say, I think from an ROI standpoint, two, three uh, guidelines I would say. One is do small proof of concepts, uh, create a roadmap, but do small things and show value. 
then our roadmap goes approach rather than trying to solve everything right now. Then also focus a lot more on adoption. And by adoption, I mean it might be adoption because, you know, algorithms are not easy to adopt. So can we gamify it? Can we simplify it? Uh, mm -hmm. Can we scale it up using a, a cloud and other environments? So a lot of focus around scaling and adoption has to come in this real and more so after I, I, I want to chime in, and this is something I, I just want to ask you. Uh, mm -hmm. Last 10, 15 years, this industry, while it's grown phenomenally, have always struggled to kind of create common benchmarks, common best practices, frameworks. And it's been an excruciatingly painful exercise to go to a client or go to a kind of, let's say, potential customer and say, look, I do the best. This is what is my framework and this is what my IP. And suddenly you see a lot of disparateness. Any thoughts over there? I, I know we are all stakeholders and part of this entire, I would say, mechanism of being culprit. So what's your take over there? Yeah, I, I think that I, I agree with you, Samir, on that one. There's no doubt about it. But I don't know if I want to solve that uh, and not more so because I think the space we're attacking is huge. Uh, because, see, if you think AI or analytics, the terms are a little abused also. And more so there's a reason for it being abused because people... It's like a big elephant. Uh, if you touch it from different parts, you, uh, you, you feel the different things. You don't realize it's a tail of an elephant or a leg of an elephant. You, you think, you know, that it's still a pillar or something else. So it's like that. This space is so huge. Uh, it means it's very difficult to come to a common denominator uh, in some form uh, so quickly. And it's also moving very fast. Uh, I think uh, 20 years back, probably it was data warehousing. Today it's data lake, data engineering. Today you are suddenly adding new concepts into data, which are probably feature engineering. Uh, earlier it was more statistical modeling, regression, and others. Now you are suddenly doing anomaly detection because trends do not met, are not that meaningful anymore. So I think a lot of, of things are actually it's a huge space. I think it will happen over time. I'm not so worried about that whole thing because I think people are doing it today. If you see when I think just the education sector, the simplified uh, way, uh, when we used to hire people 15 years back, it was more about, you know, let people come in, rest will be done in the job. But today there's a lot of finishing schools, there's a lot more definitions coming in place. So it's happening, but, but the pace at which the demand is going is probably much higher. So I don't think we'll see an equilibrium very soon. Uh, so, and I think it's a good problem to have. I think in some form, uh, it's, See, there are products which are starting to come up, huh, be it as a platform, uh, which are open source, others which people are uh, using also more so than others. So that's one thing. Then there are also applications. It solves a very specific problem, but uh, sometimes you buy that because if your problem is not too complex and it can scale up, you'll use that. But more so, I think every business is very different from each other in form of how they store data, the problems they face, the the, the way they want to see the consumption. So I think it ends up being a lot of different, different things for different people. Yes, there is a capability view. Uh, there are some products and platforms coming in place, but that's only scratching the surface. The, the space itself is huge, probably. I think you rightly said, and there is a, in a lighter way, a joke. Uh, so I remember whenever uh, I used to approach a customer or a potential prospect, uh, uh, there used to be a kind of a wry smile on her face. Uh, and I was always questioning, okay, what is the new trailer of the movie you've got? And I used to ask, okay, what does this new trailer mean? And by the way, that prospect never became a customer. Uh, what does this new trailer mean? So she says, look, uh, as you see that the hit movies always have sequels, but analytics AI doesn't have sequels. You just show the trailer and the trailer is always rinsed and repeated and there is always a new trailer. The movie hasn't been seen by anyone. And that's something which, if I take in a more meaningful manner, means that there is a lot more potential. There's a lot more, I would say, another thing uh, we need to do as part of bringing those insights, facets of discovery for the client. So, I, And I think you rightly said that it's all about in a mode where the industry has moved so fast with high velocity, near craniums, new set of, I would say, sophistications happen on the tools, techniques, and that's led to 
more like a situation where clients kind of need to be educated about, okay, where do they stand and what's the best kind of a tool services model for them. So I think yeah, good, good to know about that. In, in the same extension, Jeet, there is also a phenomena we talk about uh, this whole aspect about AI and analytics maturity, calibration, benchmarking assessment you talked about. But having said that, you are into a pure play kind of a, let's say, environment in terms of AI solutions, product, and uh, consulting. Client engagement models, client success factors in terms of how we approach clients. One, the new set of clients, how we kind of, let's say, look at existing clients. And I know you you are all, I mean, it's just that this period you've been on kind of, let's say, homebound and in a lockdown, but you've always been on the road. What do you think will change in this scenario? How do you see client engagement? How do you see this whole scenario of existing relationship? And have you heard anything from your set of clients or potentials which you would like to share, please? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think if you ask me, that's uh, surely the thought which keeps on uh, uh, be a part of a growing enterprise like ours, and and that surely makes us nervous also. And I think if you just think today, I think today again, if I break it up into just today a short term and a slightly longer term again based on what I was talking about the scenarios post COVID. Uh, I think that the short term is more about, you know, uh, uh, whatever you were doing for me, uh, it's not new conversation so much. It was more about whatever you were doing. Uh, can you deliver it in spite of working from home? And is my data secured? Is, is, are you able to operate? Is my program going to get delivered? So that's a very short term plan comfort which you're talking about. But I think what we're also seeing right now, a lot of the demand is more about, you know, don't worry about big solutions. We are in a different scenario. Just tell me what is happening. Uh, can you almost say, say analytics in a tap kind of a thing? Can I open up, consume some of it, close it kind of a thing? It's almost like, can you be my war room support in all the things I'm doing right now? To you, unknown to me, but bring in more data. Tell me what's happening. Also, there is value if you are working across industries. Tell me what's really happening. You might work in a different industry, but there are synergies uh, too because uh, there are so many things which are impacting it. It's not a very simple just a value chain, uh, but there are uh, factors in one industry which has a cross impact in another industry which is starting to build on. So how do you fight this battle uh, for your business is probably the current engagement, mostly with existing clients. New clients are open to hear out what's happening. But I think if you fast forward this a little bit for, for the next two months or three months, uh, I think there's a lot of time will go in terms of marrying what I would say, what is analytics, what is AI, and what is the client's digital agenda. Because client is bound to have, in most cases, uh, a new digital agenda. And I think crisis is probably also a mother of innovation. Uh, people will get out and reimagine their business, rethink their business. And we as uh, players, I think there is a space to then educate them and also, in many cases, guide them. You know, whatever you're talking about digital, a lot of it is all about data, and a lot of this is all about intelligent automation. Uh, and, you know, this is how uh, you should... If I may yeah. chime in, uh, what I'm trying to hear, I'm sorry I'm chiming in, that there are two ways of looking at this. One, there is a view which is like a view, okay, let's get out of it and we think. Or what I'm also hearing, which is a good thing to hear that, look, we understand we have a digital agenda and AI is at the frontier of that or analytics wherever they stand. Now let's, Instead of aborting it, let's accelerate and ensure that there are meaningful metrics of gauge, compass, and kind of let's say toll gates to ensure that it's well managed. Is that what you're trying to say? Absolutely, and, and that's why I would be bullish even in this scenario, in, in terms of this industry and this profession, uh, there might be a silver lining there uh, where there might be a lot of positive things because as digital adoption happens, a lot of these programs are all about AI analytics. So I think those will probably get first forwarded. We obviously there is a temporary impact which we'll all see. But if you go past that, I think there is a. I think I means you will 
not want uh, so much of exactly the same amount of human intervention. You want machines to do more. If you if you walk into a hospital, you probably want to uh, interact with lesser people and get automated systems. If you want to work with a bank, you want more to be done through your uh, through your digital device, say a mobile or other. So I think that's a new reality uh, where I think uh, there's going to be digital programs which will just get fast forwarded. Uh, which I think obviously uh, uh, it's it's not pure IT, it's not pure tech. It's all about AI analytics, which is I think the opportunity ahead probably. Great. So just one more question, and I want to turn to the audience. And we've got a array of questions on my mobile, in fact, and it's good to see how the traction is building. Uh, Link to what you said now. This scenario, and this is specifically, there are many folks in the participants who are from consulting firms, analysts, uh, service providers, and even the AI platform and solution players. Now, in the beginning of 2020, we had this theme, reimagine the business with AI. Cut mm -hmm. to April 2020, it's resurrecting the business with question mark. Now, which means, what changes in the products solutions, offerings, consulting approaches, you think AI providers, AI consulting player, AI startups, ventures should be doing as part of their overall portfolio of offerings? Hmm. Yep, uh, very good question. And I think uh, we had also been thinking about this for a while, uh, uh, given I think, uh, again, COVID will accelerate, but I think with digital adoption, I think, uh, that's the reality in some form. And I, as I was answering your last question, I think one big capability is going to be marrying AI analytics to digital agenda. And, and that's really a, not an easy thing to do. It's again, uh, someone has to shape up the agenda, uh, break it up uh, into smaller chunks of AI problems, solve it, uh, simplify it uh, in terms of how it could be adopted, then sustain it, and I, I would call that loosely consulting in some form uh, on AI for digital. So that's going to be one big area uh, where I see a lot more attention uh, coming in. But having said that, I think the other big area obviously is going to be, a lot of this is going to be still automation, mm. and, I, and I would loosely again call it intelligent automation. So whatever algorithms and everything you might develop has to get integrated back into systems. Uh, which uh, business users will use or the machines will do the work on their own. So integrating technology and analytics uh, is the second capability or the area, I would say more of capability so than anything else. That, uh, okay. Jeet, I'm sorry, I'm chiming in because that's a question, in fact, Jajit has asked. Uh, when you skew towards automation, uh, you are trying to embed AI intelligence in the kind of software in the product or in the solution. But won't that actually shift the agenda or rather the whole set of focus for the solution providers all of a sudden? Are you saying they need to pivot or they need to kind of do something else? I think a lot of tomorrow's tech spend is going to be unfortunately this, uh, so which is about uh, you know automation, and I'll break this up. So there is a demand for automation and, and rethink. This is not a process automation anymore. But it is the model that you adopted, which is say you are selling online, uh, you're selling direct to consumers, or your product is digital, or you're using sensors. So a lot of those are actually the source of information to automate. And the reality is that you automate based on learning from that data. Uh, the last mile is only a part of it. There's a big part of how do I create data? And how do I create learning from it, which makes it an AI problem than a pure technology problem? So yes, either companies who are already in the technology space will shift, and that's why you see a lot of them are actually building this capability because that's tomorrow's automation is going to be more uh, beyond process automation, beyond RPA to more intelligent automation. So it's not about just automation, it's going to be data-driven automation. And that's where I think it's, 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 it's a new, it's not a, everyone's cup of tea. Obviously, everyone will do it over a period of time, uh, but that has to be built. So that's really the difference between what I would call, yes, there are solution providers will pivot into this, 
but who picks it up faster or the niche players will come and do it is going to be interesting how the dynamics build up there's enough room i think for a lot because you you would see everything you touch probably will be that so so then uh, there are multiple types of play, players some will pivot some will build some will uh, have uh, they are just niche players in the space who will probably do this that's my two cents around it so what what i'm trying to take uh, what you said it's like automation from wherever it was as part of strategic focus now would be at a stage or at a cusp where it will start getting embedded into the client operating model so it becomes more strategic more kind of let's say uh, intertwined with ai and the whole focus gets more into the intelligence piece of that right this is more autonomous decision making if i might put it that way that is going to be the new world you will enable human uh, to do their thing because there's they would need either guidance or you replace in some cases of human doing things because human cannot do it uh, in that scenario and that's going to be the new need of the day uh, where it's uh, where you will play a role it's it and it will it's not rocket science again it's because you know you are able to machine can read data from a video or machine can detect anomalies huh? and uh, so there are multiple things which will feed into that automation but finally a sales guy will say you know you should buy this product because certain things that has happened in your business so that's the new world probably so we'll talk about sales in ai and analytics from you of course i i know there are things we have discussed in the past one interesting question jeet and this is interesting uh i may have to read it to get a full grasp in terms of the question and uh you will kind of be i'll be happy to kind of have your views we do not expect covid to be to be the only crisis in the coming future which affects the entire global businesses are businesses now evolving in a mode of doing business called crisis mode so the next time they are better prepared how can ai help now this will test the intelligence chip or whatever little is left amongst us in this so the the whole thought process is look this is one of the i mean all those scenarios we've always talked about crisis and all that turbulence and uh, what is that ai can do over there now actually then if you think and, and i'll just draw a similarity to any of you who are probably data science practitioners uh, i think i'll draw a similarity to something probably 10 years back a lot of our body of work has been understanding patterns or trends so it's looking at history learning from it and act on it so that's what typically we would have done in many cases but even without covid i think we are now seeing a lot of interesting applications and and ai is in the heart of it on what i call as anomaly detection or exception management uh the using analytics or ai again so it's if you think to i think crisis as you're talking is one crisis there's going to be more and there are different types of crisis if this is a macro crisis but in a micro level a new customer issue crops up which you have never seen in the past before it blows up into a big thing can i act on it or again in some form say fraud detection concepts like every fraudster is different from each other so as as he starts doing a few things can i catch them early so i think even in ai i think a lot of current applications has been into not understanding patterns and trends but looking at exception management or looking at newer trends before it becomes big and uh, which is again the whole theory of anomaly detection and other so i think actually those techniques and the role of ai will become even more important after covid uh, because people will be conscious about it and then and, and and hence ai will have a huge role to play because ai is typically known a lot more about understanding historical data but now you will see a lot more application you know this is what unexpected this is this could start coming in so yes there are a lot more applications around race car supply chain you would not just do forecasting based on trend on demand or supply in map planning but you start thinking of what could be the things which could hit me and how do i at that point of time act better than what used to be earlier so i think that's a new norm i think in some form i think the interesting ai has also been coping up with such applications so you will see a lot more ai actually sitting in the use cases for such scenarios great great so it's a complex an answer but, uh, I think but that's a great uh, answer uh, in fact uh, this a uh, a question which has come in which uh, is is a very uh, i would say pertinent question and i i'll just uh, 
kind of uh, ask your views on this. You mentioned about this whole digital transformation, the agenda around organizations uh, taking a strategic view of that. Now, a conglomerate or an organization enterprise which have multiple subsidiaries, multiple processes. How do you think the whole prioritization of strategic initiatives around digital stroke AI transformation can happen in this scenario? There are multiple entities, multiple subsidiaries, and multiple processes. So let us know, please, what's your view in terms of prioritization of, and this is like more like from a CXO conversation happening. No, that's actually a very good question, and I will break it up into two parts. One is, might be in India kind of a scenario where conglomerates are more popular than focused companies. So how do you handle it at group level? Uh, is one part of it and it could also be one level below say within a company typically you could be, do ai for sales or supply chain and other functions but is that optimal uh, because in many cases how do you prioritize you might do a lot of ai in sales but then the value chain breaks down because somewhere in the uh, downstream or upstream you have not followed up and used ai in supply chain so what is the use of selling uh, if supply chain is not geared up so hence, I think a lot actually uh, is becoming more popular rather than individual silos doing uh, AI applications. I think a lot of companies have started to think about this at an enterprise level or pan-enterprise or at a group level. In India, I'm now seeing there's a lot of group level initiatives which are coming up for large enterprises with different business models. And then there is a owner uh, who again cooperates with different sub-business units, so you call it a chief analytics officer, chief AI officer, chief digital officer in some cases, who's drawing a roadmap of how multiple companies or multiple functions should actually approach it and do gradual investment, see value, and then based on the ROI, reinvest further and drive it. But looking at it in totality is super important because you might otherwise solve partially which doesn't give the ROI and, and more so we see this if it is a very discrete approach uh, in many cases you, you do a one-time value but you don't make it sustainable uh, you might be able to you know solve one portion of it but if you, someone is not looking at it totally uh, then you, you will not get the highest benefit from this whole thing so I, I think it's a beautiful question and I think a lot of companies are becoming very conscious. You will see a lot of group companies in India have a chief digital officer or chief analytics officer who's actually running that agenda for them uh, and working on with again providers or internally to work on the different CXOs or the CEOs of different group companies to make it happen. Great, great. So over there, uh, Jee, then this is linked to the conversation we had earlier in the first half of our uh, uh, kind of uh, session. The question again will come in, and this this is one of the questions which is also come in that look while we do that in terms of prioritization, as you rightly said, uh, the stakeholders get involved. Then there is a whole line of strategic objectives, initiatives, uh, and there is a kind of a linearity in terms of thoughts. But again, the question would be okay while we do it. How do you start measuring the ROI? Is there a benchmark? Is there a calibration? Is there a compass which you would like to say, yeah, or this is what has happened in the past, maybe through one of your conversation, one of your project engagement, or even generic, which you believe could be like a benchmark for uh, the participants to know, look, this is the way I think this could be a kind of a time where it gives more skin in the game for the analytics AI providers. No, again, Shamil, I think great question. Uh, I think there are two parts of this. This has to be started pre-investment, and this, there is something after the work is done which needs to come into place. And at a pre-investment stage, I think there is obviously, like any other large investment of enterprise makes, this has to be thought through uh, and planned for based on ROI expectations. So when a program gets prioritized, because you probably will get a higher ROI versus others, or this is easier to implement. So, so you go through, uh, again, an exercise of an ROI expectation on which metrics based on the baseline are you going to move, and uh, how are you going to prioritize projects. But as you finish each of the projects, I think there is also a concept of monitoring and governance, which is becoming more important. 
or where you are able to track through whatever metrics you talked about and whatever your models are talking about, can I post implementation, see if that is really happening. And it's not easy, I think, historically for other models, we used to talk about model governance, but today I think there is a whole AI and machine learning governance and monitoring, which I think is also becoming very popular, where you are looking at what all projects you have put in place and can I have a system to track what it was supposed to do. Is it in line with that expectation? Because obviously, based on, yeah, you have projected something. Then you are tracking and fine tuning in some cases or throwing away a project or looking at new partners to drive. Because this is a tough area. I think a lot more, and, and also there is impact of one thing you do into others. So if you're not able to capture it end to end and, and, and create almost like a governance mechanism, uh, based on the monitoring, it doesn't work. And it is a technology for some companies, but it's, it's the new norm. Uh, whereas a lot of focus has moved into monitoring and governance once you're implemented and tracked back to the newer investment from the roadmap. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, I think this whole piece around governance and monitoring is a new facet what you've introduced. Jeet, uh, I, I want to come to a question which is something I've always been uh, uh, wanting to ask, and this I'm sure will benefit participants. Uh, and there is a viewpoint today. Uh, in my personal experience, I've often come across many AI practitioners, uh, thought leaders, experts. And while that's a different thing, that if you go to the LinkedIn, every second profile is an AI evangelist, visionary, influencer, and a leader. But the fact over there, delivery consulting engagement is fine. The cell piece of analytics AI is the most tough, is rather really tough. And it's often, I mean, there is no play, playbook over there because the client is a client. And because of sophistication, as you rightly said, which has happened, so many genre changes, so many kind of new acronyms, techniques, tools have come in, selling becomes more difficult. Now, as a kind of a CEO and as a practitioner and a kind of a, let's say, influencer, you've been into many client conversations, multiple, several with prospects, clients, CXOs, global Fortune 500. What are, or rather, let me rephrase, what is Jeet's playbook of AI selling? Yeah, I don't know if I'm the right person to answer it. I can share my experiences. I won't say it's a full list. Yeah, I wanted to catch you off guard, so that's why. <laughs> after it, I can talk to and I'll also share with you one reference after this, which you may want to read through. But uh, I think my uh, suggestion and what I have at least been doing, I think in most cases, clients are very open because I don't think even clients know what needs to be done. So they are very open to be educated. Uh, and they want to feel uh, uh, confident that, you know, the partner could be trusted and has the capabilities that are important. So in some form almost trying to say, you know, I don't know what I don't know, but the, the, the person who's selling or the enterprise who's selling is able to wear my shoes and uh, while obviously they have a secret sauce inside, but my getting articulated and, 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 and the solution I can touch and feel is what they are mostly looking at. And if you can paint that up, uh, because obviously we are an interesting space because we are practitioners, we, we have a lot of horizontal capabilities, data engineering, analytics, others. But finally, when a client buys, he buys a supply chain solution for healthcare or something like that. So, so, so you, that translation is one part, I think solutioning it, if I might put it that way, and tell them what does it mean, they are more than open to get educated around it. And if they feel comfortable, they would, you would be able to make a sale. And by that sale, I don't mean it's a technical sale. It is about wearing their shoes and more a consultative sale around it. Other part, I think, it's a, it's a, in any B2B world, I think it's a trust game. Uh, it's a long haul that uh, the client at the uh, seller comes together. Uh, can you trust uh, each other is the biggest point there. Are they just talking about concepts or are they are they're going to be with me like COVID? Uh, I think it's an interesting space. I think a lot of clients have 
now we we'll go to a bad time uh, in some form we might also go through it but again so can you stay with them help them through the whole thing work through what their needs are i think it's going to evolve as a i think by sales you are actually uh, probably marrying two parties together but having said all of those there are experts i i uh, i love the book by shubhrata bakshi he wrote a few uh, years back i think on sales the art science and witchcraft if i'm not wrong I would say anyone in a bit of science and the witchcraft, uh, right? That's what you say. <laughs> okay, okay. So you may want to read through. I think it's a very nice B two B sales uh, book. Uh, obviously, it may not exactly work, but I think uh, Indian IT industry obviously have seen a lot of those, uh, and some of the best practices are shared there. But analytics is going to be a little different, or AI is going to be a little different. So that part I tried to address earlier. So it's 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 not easy. You can't put it into a a uh, uh, science uh, and say now everyone can do it uh, it it is uh, not a very easily scalable concept so i think uh, trying to focus on a few industries or few domains or few capabilities might help uh, where you can talk sense uh, but then finally it's about uh, building that partnership well jet uh, we can go on and on we are at the top of the hour but must say look uh, I think uh, I'm sure the participants can relate when a leader who has been into the industry for long speaks. The whole aspect becomes the nuggets of wisdom. The perspective becomes more strategic, and I'm sure, uh, just like me, there have been learnings which all of us can take forward in terms of what we see today—a new set of opportunities for AI analytics player. Thank you so much for your time, Jit, and. I must confess with the participant, this is the longest ever discussion we had ever. So we've always been planning over dinner and lunch, but maybe this time it's realized, but I think good of it. I mean, it came out very evidently in terms of you almost gave a kind of a secret sauce playbook in terms of how analytics AI needs to step up in terms of the whole notch in terms of not only selling, but also in terms of putting the metrics also how organizations needs to view this strategically and what pivot changes everyone needs to do as part of their own objectives to ensure it's up and running the moment we are on. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. And uh, stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me here. And thanks, participants, for joining in. Stay safe, everyone. Stay indoors and talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.